Hello, everybody, and welcome to our JCN session this evening. It's lovely to be back on the Facebook Lives, and thank you all for spending this time with us for this session titled Demystifying Prescription Orders for Compression Garments. So co-presenting tonight is myself. Um, I'm Alison Schofield, Tissue Viability Nurse and Clinical Manager at Mole Digital. We also have with us the wonderful Alison Barker, who is um, a lower limb specialist nurse team leader in a complex lower limb service in the Y Valley NHS Trust. And Alison has a wide range of experience, many years, as a tissue viability nurse too. This session is kindly supported this evening by Essity. Now certificates, which everybody always asks, and it's so important to our continuing professional development, they are available at the end, so stay with us. And do bear with us if we experience any technical issues. We are at home, as you can see, and as you know, gremlins can sometimes get into the system. Please do comment and ask the questions in the chat, have discussions as we go along, and any of the questions will be addressed um, live at the end. So again, please um, do stay with us. So without further ado, if we go into um, our um, live presentation this evening, and so on to um, our learning objectives. Okay. Um, I'm just looking for the um, on on my screen for the learning for the slide there. Um, so the um, learning objectives this evening. Obviously, we're going to be looking at um, demystifying um, the um, um, prescribing um, within um, um, compression um, hosiery. We're going to be learning about all the step by step systems. How do we um, how do we do that? How do we, um, you know, see that um, um, within within practice? Um, we're going to there's, there's ten steps, so we're going to be going through every step with you. Um, so, um, um, so you know, do 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 this is this is it's such an important subject to me because I remember this so well in practice of of learning about this whole process, and I know many of you will be there in the audience saying, "Oh my goodness, you know, I, I just." I just can't get my head around this and I want to learn why. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to um, to Alison now to just tell us why does that prescribing matter? Thanks, Ali. And um, thank you again to Essity for asking me to present tonight. And hello to everyone out there who's tuned in on the Facebook Live. Um, so, yes, um, why does prescribing matter? Well, it's so important to get it right. In my experience, it matters because if the garment doesn't arrive in time or it doesn't fit, then this means there's time spent assessing and measuring the patient and, poss and possibly reducing the edema with the bandaging is obviously wasted time. Um, as health, health professionals, we know the importance of compression garments uh, and we want them obviously to be received promptly. And this is obviously vital for the patient care. Mary Wood's audit in 2018 confirmed just that. Um, if the compression garment is not received as expected, it may take longer to fit the patient when it actually does arrive or due to their limb shape or edema that have, may have changed over that time. And obviously, you know, most importantly, it can result in the treatment for the patient being compromised. And that's something, you know, obviously we don't want. So what do we need to know? Well, we need to make sure that the patient gets the right garment as quickly as possible to help manage their condition. And we need to understand the process of creating a prescription. And there is different ways to order it. And um, obviously we want to include the patient with that so they're fully informed. The patient plays such a key role in their care and they do need to be informed. Um, and like you, I like me, sorry, I'm, I'm sure you want, you know, the best uh, treatment outcomes and the, the prescription is a small part of the overall holistic care that you provide. However, the impact it can have when it doesn't go as expected is obviously quite significant. Uh, and I'm sure, as I find with busy clinics and workplaces, if you do, you know, if you do, you want to avoid chasing around for prescriptions and resolving garment issues. So obviously, I'm really keen on this session to sort of impart my knowledge and experience. So it is important, you know, the accurate of um, 
compression dispensing. There is actually limited uh, publish, published evidence out there, but the, there was a survey done by the JCN, Journal of, Journal of Community Nursing in 2018, and it was followed up in 21, and it confirmed that there are inaccuracies in dispensing with delays to treatment and wasting clinicians' time, and obviously expense in the health service. Clinicians have anecdotally reported difficulties in obtaining the correct compression garments, dispensing inaccuracies, delays and concerns for obviously patient safety, clinical inefficiency and unwanted variation in care. And we, and again, you know, we don't want wasted resources. There are actually over 10,000 compression garments available via prescription. So obviously there is room for error. So you can see why things, you know, can actually go wrong. We obviously want to avoid that because it negatively impacts upon the patient. From my viewpoint, there's nothing more frustrating than waiting for the garment as you obviously can't, you know, move the, the care forward for your patient. So having a little look at the importance of accurate compression dispensing, I think most clinicians expect delays. Um, with the survey, the majority of respondents were waiting between five and 14 days or more for the dispensed prescription. There was a higher number of respondents in the 21 survey compared to the previous one. And it was reported a wait of 14 days or longer. I mean, obviously this could be due to the pandemic as well that we've, you know, we've been going through. The findings are in line with the Lymphedema Network Wales audit, which highlighted that 50% of compression garment prescriptions were dispensed in incorrectly. Uh, some of these things were like the wrong size and the wrong garment. They were the top two problems that were reported in survey one, which was 70%, and survey two was 61%. I'm sure you're familiar with these kind of scenarios that are happening out there as healthcare professionals. The survey also went on to highlight that 61% of clinicians prefer the compression garment to be delivered direct to the patient's home. There's always been a, a request and a need for home delivery, but possibly the increase reflects a change in practice due to the pandemic with the emphasis on self-care and for people to stay at home. The most common route for prescriptions, though, is through the pharmacy, but a DAC, dispensing appliance contractor, provides an alternative. They've got expertise in compression and they can alleviate some of the issues that you face. DACs can provide increased accuracy in dispensing compression orders. They've got good delivery times and obviously provide a, a free home delivery as well. So if we, so Alison, um, we were looking at there about the, you know, the importance of, of the accurate prescribing and, and the compression. So if we, we, you know, the, the, there's um there's a lot, a lot of terminology um ar around this, and um and there's if we look at the, there on screen, we can see that there's a glossary um of of prescribing available. So with, this will be available to you all. Um, Afterwards, so we'll get this sent to you, but I just want to point out a couple of things on there because um, we refer to this um, throughout. Um, so we refer to um, EPS, which is electronic prescribing, um, and that's that's something that that's prescriptions that is sent electronically from the GP practice to the pharmacy or to the DAC, as Alison just mentioned. DAC removing the need for the patient to collect the printed copy from their GP. Isn't it wonderful having these digital systems these days? I wish many moons ago we had these available. And then the DAC, so that is the dispensing appliance contractor. Um, so that's a business that is contracted to the NHS to provide a dispensing service by post and they specialise in compression prescriptions. So that really helps us to ensure the fast, accurate and dispensing um, to anywhere within the UK. OK, um, I don't know if Alison's just lost her sound, so I'm going to just, just carry on um, with um, with you for, for now until we can... Um, and retrieve her back. Gremlins in the system, I shouldn't have said that, should I? Because here they are. 
So we've got different types of compression garments, and some of you will be familiar with 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 uh, with these. With, um, we hope, but as I said back in the day many years ago I wasn't aware as a community staff nurse of all these different types until I did correct education um, from uh, from our industry partners in, into what you know different garments and why we should be using them so we have different ones for prescribing we have elastic hosiery we have a lymphedema garments and we also have venous ulcer compression systems so um, different things available to different people okay um lymphedema edema garment category which is something that we're, we're really focusing on this evening is um, so we have the compression within this category and this is what we're going to be looking at when we're talking about our step process so within this um we have lymphedema chronic edema which we see all the time don't we it's very very um, common becoming more common with other um, health issues such as obesity so um, you'll be looking at the lymphedema category on the drug tariff um, so they tend to fall into three main types so we've got the custom fit so that's if you think of like a, a bespoke made to measure we have the ready to wear so we measure for that and we can you know it's like an off the shelf um, ready to go system and we also have the, um, the, the 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 compression wrap systems which are great we have you know those where they come with a foot piece a calf piece knee piece and even thigh piece so so uh, they are fantastic to use listen are you back with us i am i'm here oh, i'm so there. sorry <laughs> so sorry said to everybody I said I mentioned the remlins in the system and I shouldn't have done and there they've popped up oh my god <laughs> I'm so sorry yeah no I'm back I was just getting into my flow <laughs> I know you were well I I've I've just I've just gone over the glossary and the lymphedema garments for us there which obviously you you know within depth and um and um you were going to tell us about but I was just thinking you know when you were talking about um um and all that and the because you know so we can't so we can't get delays and 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 um and in the, the you know the the ordering the prescribing getting the garment to the patient because really when you think about when we have that delay as clinicians we never equate that to you know not i'm not talking about the impact to the patient which we know but the impact to kind of our trust the nhs and i'm thinking in finance terms because we know there's a burden of wound care of 8.3 billion pounds we were talking before we're saying leg ulcers are the highest you know issue within this burden yeah and each extra home visit so we've made an error oh we have to go back again we have to re-measure re-prescribe each then um, you know further visit to clinic that's over a hundred pounds within that without everything else added on and we just don't think about that do we so getting that right care first time is vital isn't it would you agree yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, you know, there are 10 steps that we're going to go through tonight, but it, you're absolutely right. It's from that very first sort of word can go where you're actually making that assessment to your patient. It's not just all the prescribing and the ordering. It is actually from that point of assessment where you measure your patient, you need to get that right. And then obviously, you know, it gets into the system and goes along. But um, obviously, in the presentation, there are kind of options which could could help the clinicians out there. Yeah, absolutely. And I was saying, like, isn't it great now we've got digitalization because years ago we were writing everything out and it's yeah. like now it's just there's less room for error with that and it's just a yeah. much better system with all you know with DAX and everything else that we've got there now yeah. so but I know like I say we're going to go through the processes step by step so please do tell us how do we demystify this process <laughs> hopefully I won't get cut off so <laughs> yeah so uh, why do we need to demystify the process well this is why, um, as you can see, the order route can be different depending on the type of order, the dispenser and the manufacturer. The flow chart that you can see gives you an idea of what it looks like. And, and you know, for everyone who's involved and the, the paper and the compression garment traveling from one place to the other. So it's, it's a complex process that, you know, um, hopefully we'll 
impart our knowledge and experience for helping you get it right. So if you have obviously wondered why it doesn't go right, well, you can see you can see why. Um, there's lots of pieces to the puzzle, um, but hopefully on this step-by-step -step guide, we're going to take you through it. We've broken it down into 10 steps, so hopefully it will make it easy for you to follow. Um, and Ali Schofield is going to use a case study and bring it to life, making it easy for you to follow when you practice. So thanks, Ali. There's so many steps, Alison, isn't there there? And when that you put that first slide up there, it's like that, that you know, it's like mathematical equation to, in my brain is that. It's like, oh my goodness, like I said, it takes me back years going, I don't know how to do this, you know. And our audience tonight will be, uh, they'll be able to relate to that because they'll be like, oh my God. But if we, we're systematic in what we do as clinicians and if we approach it like that and we break it down. And like you said, what we're going to do now is because if we, we put this into real terms so we're going to we're going to talk about and consider how we take these steps um through into a you know a patient scenario um and you know we are all so busy never busier than before in the past two years with the COVID-19 pandemic so if we get this right we're going to stop the recurrence of leg ulcers by patients being going into their maintenance hosiery so we're going to save time um, by you know not having to keep going out we've got recurring leg ulcers um, and uh, you know reapplying bandages and every, everything else and patients are more likely if we get the process right to continue to wear um, the, the, the hosiery um, that's prescribed so um so there's lots of support out there you know industry are our partners and if you're going to be unclear even by the end of this if you're still unclear please do get in touch with them um to um so we you know we're, we're getting it all right in the long run right let's go on to looking at our lovely lady mrs walker now mrs walker is a, a real life person this did um happen within a, a real life um legal service um in in england so um mrs walker is um an 80 year old lady um she was referred to the district nursing team following a hospital admission now the reason for her admission um to acute care was because she had cellulitis so she got a, um, edema this chronic edema that nobody would seen or diagnosed into her leg got a break to a skin you know this can happen by just a knock to a leg an insect bite can't it anything that um, causes a break to the lower limb if that wound is present for two weeks or more then we class it as a leg ulcer so for mrs walker she got a break to the skin she's tried to self-treat this and she developed an infection a bacterial tissue infection of cellulitis now it, it you know it did progress and it, and she did become quite um, systemically unwell and was eventually admitted to hospital requiring an IV antibiotics. So when she got well from that, she was discharged back into her own home and the referral then comes to the DNT. She still got a small wound present at this time um, below the knee, above the ankle. So. Um, um, she was um, visited by the district nurses and she had um, a full vascular assessment, including ABPI. Fantastic. That's what we want to see. Um, and the, and um, then she was put into initially a compression bandage system to reduce the edema and the swelling to kind of reshape the leg, which is always a good plan of care. Um, and the wound that she had healed quickly. So the time then came for um, to her to be measured for her ongoing compression journey, which was into a compression um, hosiery garment. It might be a wrap system for some patients. So that's to control that rebound edema and to prevent any leg ulcer occurrence. So, um, so that the, the um, when the measuring was done a prescription was then raised by the gp now we know some um, nurses within you you yourself nurses in teams district nurses tvns i myself i'm a prescriber but in this circumstance uh, th this prescription was raised um, by the GP and it might be that the person completing the measuring form um, isn't a prescriber and that's absolutely fine as long as they are competent in that measuring process. 
So Mr. Walker then takes the, uh, um, this prescription along to the pharmacy. The pharmacy orders, sends, you know, puts an order in um, from the manufacturer via a wholesaler. It took four weeks for a garment to arrive, but unfortunately, this garment did not fit. So then a nurse prescriber remeasures. And again, it might not be the nurse prescriber who remeasures, but somebody who is incompetent in, in, um, in measuring and then a prescription done. So the husband takes this prescription to the pharmacy, but this time no garment arrives. Nine weeks later, and at this point, the, 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 the team, the community team have stopped going in. The leg ulcers healed. They're not going in for nine weeks to bandage, bandage, bandage. But they've no, um, the, the, the family have no contact information. So nine weeks goes by. They're just in the dark. They don't know what's happening. Of course, they're frustrated. Mr. Walker's frustrated. Mrs. Walker is, you know, getting quite low in mood and fed up with this. She gets another break to the skin and a recurrence of cellulitis. The GP visits at home because she's too unwell to visit the surgery and prescribes antibiotics. The husband then, absolutely um, frustrated and fed up with the situation, files a complaint. So while we're waiting for hosiery to be delivered, and no, we don't, we're not going to be waiting usually, and if we follow the steps we're going to go through, we won't be waiting four weeks, nine weeks. But if it's a week, two weeks, do continue the compression bandaging system, or you will get rebound edema. Or if, if, they, if, if the patient still has a wound or they're getting to the end of the wound and it's managing the exudate with a, with a dressing, prescribe a hosiery kit you know those two layers it's like it's just this you know the same compression as having a bandage and there's um you know studies the venus four leg ulcer study showed us that patients are more likely to adhere to maintenance hosiery if they've had you know leg ulcer hosiery kits um in place earlier on remember as well antimicrobial stewardship so we don't want antibiotic after antibiotic after antibiotic and litigation is rising in lower limb care it's not just pressure ulcers so you know we want to um, cut down um, on the on the complaint system um, going forward so how could this have been managed differently what difference would it have made to the patient outcome so can you picture this scenario? I know I can, and it happened to me and it's happened to a patient of mine and it was my mistake. So let's all reflect on this, reflect on your patients. And if we can aim to have this garment delivered within two weeks, which is the process, Mrs. Walker and her husband can continue self-caring with a good quality of life, no delays, and no infection. So Alison, please take us on step one. Okay, thanks, Sally. Um, yeah, step one obviously is at, at the start and it, we're gonna assess and measure the patient. Um, as I said, we're gonna be looking at the lymphedema category. So they, they fall into three um, types of compression. You've got your custom fit, uh, and this is made to the patient's um, leg measurements. You've got your ready to wear and a wrap compression system and they're pre-sized so you prescribe or order the appropriate size for your patient. But whatever category or product you choose, they've all got one thing in common. You must, you, there's a need to um, measure your patient for the garment. We're not going to go into huge detail about that because assessment and selecting the right garment is, well, it's a topic in itself, but there is lots of um, educational support out there for you and training and, you know, you get things, as you can see, online and there's videos and, and various resources for you to tap into. So a top tip here, when selecting the appropriate compression garment for your patient, you do need to check it's on the drug tariff as not all the compression garments are. And obviously if it's not available on the drug tariff, then you're not gonna be able to get reimbursed through the prescription process. So that's important to bear in mind. So with Mrs. Walker then, um, the compression garment that she needed uh, for her chronic edema, we, she's gone for a custom fit 
flat knit compression garment. Uh, we're going to use this as the example, the custom fit example throughout this discussion. The garment is made up of a base garment plus options. And as you can see from um, Mrs. Walker, she had the closed toe and tee heel, but there are other options that you can see on the, on, on the measuring form. And they're just simply a tick box and you select it according to your, your patient and the need. So top tip again here for the evening is for a custom fit garment, the base garment and all the options must be listed on the drug tariff for the compression garment to be prescribed. If any of the options aren't on there, again, they can't be reimbursed through the prescription process. So moving on then to, you're gonna measure your um, patient. You've got the custom fit and ready to wear. Uh, the difference is the forms are so self-explanatory, they're very, they're very clear. In my experience that, you know, they show you where to measure from and, and to in relation to the garment you've selected. It's important to measure accurately, as we've already said, because that's your first step. So you need to get that right. Um, if you need any help with this, um, I've personally found the manufacturing companies, they've got, you know, they're there to give you lots of help, lots of support if you're unsure. With your custom fit compression garment, you need to record the actual measurements on the measuring form. And this is also known as your ordering form, whereas you're ready to wear you will measure the patient, but the measurements determine the size that's required and obviously the, um, the style that's being chosen. Over to you, Ali. Yeah, so uh, thanks, Alison. So uh, Mrs. Walker, so um, we, me we measuring um, is a, a, a Facebook Live in itself, isn't it, Alison? Yeah. Um, so, so that's why we haven't gone into massive detail of the step by step how to measure, but maybe that's something we need to do at another uh, another point. So this is part of this process. So for Mrs. Walker, let's measure for her garment. So she needs a below knee garment, um, but some of your patients may have edema swelling from, you know, above the knee into the thigh. And if they do, then, you know, you, you, you use the form appropriately and you just go up and above and it might be that they have a thigh length garment instead of a below the knee um so she's got quite a slim ankle really but then a larger it goes kind of larger at the calf and below the knee so that's the custom fit is right for her i mean none of us have the same shape legs do we um between us so you know um off the shelf you know just um you know ready to go garments not always suitable and um, for everybody so do consider that otherwise you're going to get that real swelling you know um, um, above the knee um so um, and then we want a really good fit with this so we need to measure from the foot up to the knee um that you know we're measuring circumference so we're measuring all those points around mrs walker and then the lengths um of the leg so each different length so just follow the form like i say you know it, it isn't it, it it isn't as complex as when you initially just glance your eyes over that form if you just take it step by step and follow each of those measurements you know um, with with a little bit of practice like with anything it will become um, second um, nature um, to you um, the knit of the garment is really important and um, Alison we were say, talking about weren't we with the, the, the knit why is flat knit so good for patients with edema well, the, the flat knit's ideal because um, with patients that have edema, obviously they can have quite complex shaped um, limbs. And obviously getting a made to, to measure garment is really important because you don't want any kind of tourniquet effects or, or sort of digging in or creating any skin breaks. Um, and also because um, sometimes the edema can be quite difficult to um, reduce and control you do need the flatness it's a slightly stiffer material which which really does help um control that yeah is it like like um using a short stretch bandage with that like static stiffness index yeah. then so there's no yeah. Yeah. really yeah, yeah. 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 that rigidity keeps all that that fluid um, there in place yeah yes. and, and, the, and the foot as well in measuring I mean if everybody goes away tonight and looks at their families or friends um, feet and legs and you will see you know we talk about the slant of the foot so Mrs Walker's got slant option on her on her um, foot 
uh, right foot there and for our, her measuring form some people might it's where the seam is at the base of the toe so some people might be on a slant some people's toes may be straight across so um interesting yeah take a look and uh, and see so Alison into step two yeah here we go <laughs> so step two uh we complete the measuring and the order form so you've got your custom fit and ready to wear um, so filling out the form is different depending on obviously whether you need either one of those garments. Um, for the custom fit garment, the manufacturer requires the measuring form so they can obviously make the garment to the patient's individual measurements and requirements. The measurement form also details all the garment requirements, so things like the style, colour, compression and class. Whereas if you're looking at the ready to wear, uh, the manufacturer doesn't actually need to know the patient's limb measurements, but instead they need to know the type of garments. They need to know the product name, style, the colour, compression and size. Um, I found the forms really user friendly. And as Ali sort of alluded to, when you actually look at them, it does really guide you through and they are more simple than you think to um, to actually use. It's, it's like having a tailor made suit, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's lovely, lovely when you think about it. That it's yeah. it's actually quite a special thing, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So so Mrs. This is Mrs. Walker's measurement form. Um, so this is what it looks like. So you need to just check through that all your areas have been filled in. So at the top there, we've got Mrs. Walker's information. We've also got the person who has done the measuring, the clinician's information. And make sure that the phone number's on there, because if there's any issues, then they can get in touch. Um, we've got all the measuring points done um, and um, we've got all the uh, the options ticked there um, as well. Is it one leg or is it two? Now, thinking about this, if a person has venous disease issues in one leg, it's quite likely they probably have in the other leg. So do assess both legs when you're doing the assessment um, and consider prescribing for both anyway, because, you know, we are in the business of prevention, not just leg ulcer management as, as well. So we've got everything ticked on here. We, you know, you've got your open and closed toe, as Alison said, those slides slant or straight um, toes, um, which compression class, one, two or three. And if you need more info on that, you know, go away to your teams or, you know, contract, contact your industry partners to, to go through education on that. You know, there's so many options. There's silicon bands at the top, which can help the, the hosiery to stay up. Silk pockets, if you've got a vulnerable area on the skin, you know, and a, a scar tissue from a previous ulcer that you want to protect. Zips, if people want to get them, you know, on donning and doffing easier. So really, really, you know, it's bespoke. And looking at those colours, I personally am going for ruby red. I don't know about you, Alison. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I agree. That would go with your top anyway, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know me, I like a bit red. <laughs> so where are we now? Oh, step three. <laughs> step three. So we're going to complete the prescription request form. And if you're a non-prescriber, this is what needs to be done. So the prescriber needs to know the details for the prescription, obviously. Um, the prescription request form needs to list all the drug tariff codes and the description for the compression garment. Now, the patient can take this to the GP surgery or the healthcare professional can obviously email it over to the GP practice. So there's a choice there. But there is a top tip for, for this section, um, which is the prescription request form is helpful for all the compression garments, not just for custom fit, but the request form should match the measuring form. That's really, really important. And if it doesn't, then that's also where other delays can happen if all the codes and the garments aren't matching, matching up. So there are online ordering solutions provided by the manufacturer that may generate the prescription request form automatically after entering the order. So this can obviously save you a bit of time. 
Absolutely. Yeah, Miss, back to Mrs. Walker. So, so she's now um, got her order form completed. We've just been through that. And so the prescription request forms, Alison just said they go hand in hand together. So the, whoever's writing that prescription, it might be somebody in your team who's a prescriber or the GP, they have to have this uh, and they have to correspond. So check all the details there are corresponding. Also on the, uh, on the um, order form there, the prescription request form there's an option there it says repeat prescription every and then blank so you can write that in now generally we go every six months don't we because obviously hosiery wears out now you know um i i remember we once had um, a patient who came to clinic and he was um a, a chef and he was on his feet for hours at a time and he'd wear them out in you know quicker so we did his three months but Generally, it, it would be uh, six months. And remember um, the, um, the fact of one to wash, one to wear, because, you know, nobody would want to wear the same pair of socks every day for six months, would you? So um, and some I know in some clinics and practices, um, they do have a policy where they'll have more than one to wash, one to wear. So, you know, just follow the procedures um, that that are there and and some places might want to order just one initially just to check that fit and then if that comes it fits then they'll do the extra ones of you know the the extra supplies and that's absolutely fine to do that so mrs walker's husband took this to the gp practice so they could generate the actual prescription to go with it um, and that was the issue in the first scenario that request form was never completed so why is it so important well hosiery is a medical device so like prescribing any medication product wound care products everything that we have prescribed has to be on drug tariff for us to be able to use it um, so you know it is really really important to get this um, this step right um, and we're swiftly moving through we're nearly halfway through on <laughs> step four yeah, so we're at the point now where we want to raise that prescription. So the prescriber needs to search for the compression garment in the prescribing system to obviously create the prescription itself. Now, there are a few prescribing systems out there and they all work differently. So just so you, to make you aware of that, um, the prescriber may need to search by drug tariff code or the product name or description. So it is important that the prescription request form contains the full product name, description and all the drug tariff codes. So when you're looking at your custom fit garment, the drug tariff code is often easier to find the item. Remember, if it is a custom fit order, there will be likely to be more than one item on the prescription. So just remembering what Ali was talking about, you know, you, you've got your garment, but you might have um, a closed toe, open toe, slant, silicon band, and these are all coded. Um, and that's important to have them uh, listed on the prescription. You're ready to wear the drug tariff codes may not be in the prescribing system, so it is actually better or easier to search by the product name. Um, another top tip for the evening here is the manufacturer or DAC can help provide support to the prescriber or GP practice, um, especially if they're experiencing problems in finding the right item uh, for the prescription. That, that's their field and they're very, very good. Yeah. And this is what Mrs. Walker's prescription looks like, just as you've prescribed. So, um, yeah, so if she needed two garments, we'd just put, you know, times two um, on, on there. So it's got the codes on there. Um, so three items on one prescription or as many things as, as um, of you, of you have requested on the uh, request form. OK, step five. Yeah, step five. So we are, we're halfway there now through our 10 steps. So choose whether to use EPS. So EPS is your electronic prescription service. So many prescriptions now are digitally signed and sent electronically rather than printing the prescription. Um, your EPS enables the prescriptions to be sent electronically from the GP surgery to the pharmacy or DAC. So obviously this removes the need for the patient to have a, a paper prescription and it takes away the responsibility for the patient doing it, although it is obviously very important to involve them in their care. 
The GP practice would then send the digital prescription to the spine and the pharmacy or DAC would then extract it from there. So if you, choose, if you are using EPS, the patient can choose the pharmacy or DAC to dispense their comp prescri uh, compression prescriptions and this is called a nomination. The patient can obviously change or their dispenser of choice at any time. They, they just they do that through their GP. They just need to speak to their GP about that. Uh, prescribing systems record the dispenser of choice and obviously the patient can nominate more than one dispenser. So, for example, you can select a pharmacy and a DAC. So prescriptions for medications go to your pharmacy and the prescriptions for your compression can go to the specialized um, specialist DAC. Top tip, remember. Oh, I think she's oh, there. I think you're frozen. For top tip. It's okay. Am I, am I still there? You're there, you're with us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. So sorry, top tip. Measuring form still needs to reach the dispenser. Um, and obviously this can't be attached to your um, EPS. So now you want to send the prescription and the measuring form to the dispenser. And there's quite a lot in this slide and there's a lot going on. So the patients have got a choice of how to get their prescription dispensed. They, need, they do need to be fully informed so they understand the process. So if the, per, the patient prefers to get their garment delivered to their home, they can, and a DAP may be an option for them. The dispenser needs the prescription and the measuring form for a custom fit order. If it's a ready to wear, the dispenser needs the prescription and the full garment details. Obviously the patient can take the measuring form and prescription unless it's obviously being sent electronically, you know, EPS to the pharmacy. The DAC receives the prescription and the measuring form by post unless it's obviously via EPS. So definitely this is a top tip which I found. You definitely need to keep a copy of the measuring form just in case it gets lost. You need to ensure that your patient's well informed if using DAC, because when you use um, uh, the DAC system, you obviously um, put your um, prescription measuring form in the free post envelope. So you do need to make sure that uh, the patients have um, spare copy, uh, spare copies, spare envelopes. Um, if it's, as I say, if it's a custom fit order, it either needs to be with a prescription and measuring form or if it's a GP surgery using EPS, just the measuring form. So I hope that kind of makes sense. I think the slide, it, it does say that there, just to reiterate, if it's a pharmacy, the patient takes the measuring form and the prescription form to the pharmacy, or the patient can take the measuring form only, and then the, um, the prescription is obviously sent via EPS. But if you're using the DAC, the patient posts the measuring form and the prescription form to DAC using the free post envelope, or the patient posts the measuring form only to DAC in the free post envelope and the prescription sent via EPS. So there's quite a lot in that slide, there's quite a lot in that process. So what is a dispensing appliance, appliance contractor DAC? Well, they're contracted to the NHS to provide a dispensing service by post, and they do specialise in compression garments. And as we've been going through this process, orders for compression garments from the lymphedema category of the drug tariff are complicated. As you can see, there's many steps and there's lots of processes going on. So obviously mistakes and errors can occur. Obviously the more you use it, hopefully that becomes less. But this is where um, the DAC, their expertise can come in and they can, they can assist and help you. They're very used to processing and dispensing compression garment orders, and they know what to look out for and what needs to be done if there's a problem. The DAC dispenses to all UK addresses free of charge. And as we discussed earlier, I think I might have been cut off there, 61% um, of clinicians in the JCN survey preferred home delivery for patients. So it's worth discussing the DAC as a dispensing option for your patients. As, as I say, they provide the free home delivery. Another top tip for the night, ensure your patient is well informed and they have a good supply of the free post envelopes. So using a DAC, using, yeah, using a DAC with online ordering. 
So there's a digital solution, Jobst or Jobst, however you wish to say it, delivered and, and Jobst online. If you choose Jobst and your patient would like to get their garment dispensed through the Jobst delivered, there's an additional benefit of using their online ordering system. I personally find this really helpful. It highlights if there's any errors in the orders, such as missing measurements or a measurement that's not within range or you haven't selected an option. Um, Jobs Online replaces the need to send the measuring form by post to Jobs Delivered. As you're creating the order, it confirms whether the garment is available on prescription and it produces a prescription request form once you've completed the order. The prescription request form contains all the garment details, as we said, which has to include your drug tariff codes and instructions for your patients. I personally, I find this a, a great benefit. Um, once your prescription is, is done, you can then send that using your free post envelope, as I've already said. And again, if it's the GP surgery using EPS, then it goes via that. Once Jobs Delivers receives the prescription, they match up the order form and the order is processed and then it's um, dispensed. They dispense the compression garment to the, um, the address that's been provided. Again, here, I think, to remember that your patient needs to update their nomination details and they can select day long direct as this is a provider of the service and as, um, as their dispenser of choice. I do use this system an awful lot and um, I think it can really help you in the long run and it actually does save time as well. I think, Alison, you've explained that really well. So I'm just going to skip over this. I'm conscious of time as well. But Mrs. Walker, she's, that's what happened with her. She nominated a DAC uh, through the GP. The GP did the raise the prescription, sent it off through the EPS, the digital service. Mrs. Walker put her order form uh, with all the measurements in the, the, in the free post envelope. And that went off. So they met together at the DAC and then the, um, the, 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 the hosiery was then delivered in the end to the clinic um, for the clinician to collect the fit. So when it works together, it all marries up and works together well. So step seven is um, so the, um, the dispenser the DAC has um, got the forms, got the prescription, they've got the order form, and then they, they double check. So it's just an extra double check. And the staff who work for these companies are all, they're all a lot of them are, are nurses. They've uh, worked in, in uh, this area of the lower limb. They're, you know, they're very um, knowledgeable. So um, if there's any issue at this point, you know, then they will certainly flag it up before it goes off to the manufacturer to be, to be made. Um, so the manufacturer um, then produces, so it gets knitted um, in its bespoke tailored form, which is fantastic. Um, and then it's, um, it then um, comes back um, to be dispensed um, to the patient. Um, so um, so the, the garment is dispensed. Do you want to say anything about the garment being dispensed there, Alison? No, I think you've covered that. That's fine. Okay, so yes, yeah, so it's dispensed and it either, you know, it, it patient can collect it from the pharmacy or the DAC can send it by um, post straight on to um, the, you know, the, um, the, the patient or it can go to the clinic. So Mrs. Walker, she receives her garment. Yay, she's got her garment timely in seven working days. It's a miracle. Um, and But that's how it should be. That It shouldn't be the four weeks, the nine weeks or anything else. It should be within seven working days or at least within two weeks. So the DAX posts this garment for Mrs. Walker's case to the clinic because the clinician wants to show Mr. and Mrs. Walker how to don and doff the garment. They want to give them some information on how to look after the skin and how to look after you know the lower limb which is vital and really important isn't it um so um within um the, the packaging is a is re um order in information as well a reorder letter um so with the drug um tariff code and codes and order codes on there so if you'd waited for the one to wash you know the extra one reorder it now at this point just the repeat prescription that needs filling in um you don't need to uh, to, to re-measure of course 
Um, and then just talking about, before we go into our questions, which I know have been flooded in uh, tonight, we just want to talk about repeat ordering. So we just we did mention about garments every six months, but obviously it's on an individualised patient basis. Um, the repeat prescription must contain all the drug tariff codes and garment description, but you don't have to do another measuring form if everything stayed the same. So um, they just need the reorder code and then they can remake um, the custom fit compression garments. Now, just to touch on reassessment of patients' limbs um, at this, because in the past, we always said six months of review, we kind of did a full reassessment and Doppler. Now, the National Wound Care Strategy Programme with its lower limb guidelines, which is national guidelines in England, are telling us that at the six monthly re-prescribing to use our clinical judgment if there are changes in the skin, if there are is changes increase in edema, if a patient has new wounds, then we should be doing then another full assessment. If everything stayed the same, then we don't need to. Now, looking at the doing lockdown and COVID, we can see how people have been affected accessing services, telephone kind of triage and appointments. So we can kind of see how that some has changed so that's why it's important to inform and empower our patients with the knowledge of what to look out for contact numbers you know if, if, if anything just change um in in that respect so this is walk absolutely perfect setup repeat prescription every six months it's delivered um she uses the dat continuing and it's um, a home delivery that it's going to a straight to a home she's continuing to wear the garment because you know it fits right it's comfortable she's happy with it um and she's now out and about enjoying life so i think it just shows that if we get this 10 step process right, it makes accurate compression um, uh, garment measuring, prescribing, ordering, um, manufacturing and the delivery seamless. And that's not a pun, <laughs> seamless for both patient um, and the clinician. So, oh, there's so much to cover there, Alison, wasn't there? Was. Um, and, uh, yeah, have we got some uh, questions coming in? Let me just have a look in my screen okay where are we so we have oh question uh, first question how often oh that, that's it how often should patients replace their garments for a new pair so um i think we've covered some of that would yeah. anything else you want to add to that alison yeah i think we said it didn't we we said every six months and I, as you said earlier on in that presentation if you are getting a custom fit uh, garments sometimes you just get the one to just check the fit check it's okay the patient's happy and then it's good to get another pair so uh, as we've said you know one on and uh, one in the wash but yeah every six months to change those garments yeah and somebody's also asking um where do we get the measurement and prescription um, from, from where do we get the me oh, you broke up a little bit there where do we get the where do we get the measurement and prescription form from Usually the manufacturing company that you're dealing with, um, they, they provide you with all the measuring forms because the measuring forms that are out there, depending on the garment that you want, you're obviously taking different measurements, but they normally make it very clear, like, you know, your custom fit, your ready to wear, a wrap system, uh, an ulcer care kit. It's all labelled very clearly on the measuring form as to what you're, you're taking the measurements yeah. for. Okay, that's great. And um, somebody's asking who's responsible for um, chasing this up. Should we, should we be advising that if the garments haven't arrived, but also oh, with the delays in two weeks, um, you know, with good communication, consistency, you know, I mean, I think in Mrs. Walker's case, it was kind of a, a multi failure, wasn't it? Because yeah if they'd have been left with contact information then they could have contacted the clinicians um and uh, but the clinicians you know wouldn't have known so it was just system if the, the steps are followed then this then it's not gonna fall down is it no um, yeah. yeah yeah um and and there's a question about virtual clinics which as i said with covid has been happening more and more so you know how accurate is the um, is prescribing somebody's asking how 
with your is the is the prescribing if we have a virtual clinic so say if somebody's not coming into clinic you know like we've had i mean we are more and more face to face now aren't we we yeah. can't get back to that but we obviously have had that situation where it's been you know telemedicine or telephone triage and you know how how accurate is is the prescribing somebody's asking me did that I mean really to measure you have to do face-to-face measurement don't you she do yeah no for some of the you know the complex limbs out there you have to do face-to-face you can't get away not doing that um and obviously I mean if um, during the pandemic I mean obviously I'm a lower limb nurse specialist but you know some some patients limbs out there are, are very complex to measure and um I have done quite a bit you know, still over the airwaves, as it were, you know, with some of the manufacturing companies and the people there, they're they're there to support you and guide you. Obviously, they're not there face to face with you, but they can still provide that support. But you're absolutely right. The actual measuring, someone has to physically be there with the patient to do it. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and the next question is about the patient's need for an applicator. And I was going to say as well, you know, with again, everybody's individual and their their own um, of abilities and things. But you know, a lot of people need to be shown how to don and off because otherwise, if you like, you like throw it in a corner. Oh, I can't be doing that because I don't know how to do it. So um, assessing for the needs of an applicator again is, is on an individual basis. So before they've received their garment, so you, they, they can come with DAC. You know, DAC don't just um, send the, the garment, can't they? they? If you put on the prescription that yeah. you want a particular type of, of aid, then, you know, that can come with it. Or it might be that they flag up or we have a problem later on and, and do it. So, it's you know, there's no... Um, yeah. right or wrong just when it, whenever it, it's uh, it's needed so and I think that that is important isn't it at the very end you know your last bit you've done all those 10 steps you've worked really hard from start to finish and it is really important to spend time making sure that your patient can don on and off uh, their garment because you don't want all that work to go to waste so it is really important and that's a that's a good question about you know the the various applicators out there and there are different ones yeah. I think we've time just for one last question. So um, if you're lost with the whole process, and this was me many years ago, what do you do? <laughs> what do you, what do we do, Alison? We're lost. <laughs> well, I personally, obviously I use a digital solution. I use jobs, delivered jobs online. And that for me is, if you use that, it gives you, great support guidance you can follow it's an easy system to use but obviously you've got other people you can you know who are familiar like myself you can you know if you've got people like us in the areas that you can obviously link in with and ask and people that are you know there are people that are familiar with the systems out there that you can obviously tap into and I think as I said in the presentation there is lots of videos and you know demonstrations and and things you can tune in online and probably since the pandemic so there's lots of resources out there and there's there's things that can take you through those steps there's so many and I'm just going to give some people some information where they can actually go to to get some more because your industry partners, you know, are your friends, they're part of the team and, um, you know, they can, they, they were such a lifeline to me, I have to say, um, through this, I know through district nursing teams. So I just want to give everybody on that last question a call to action. So to request your prescribing support pack, make sure that you tick the option as you download your certificate for um, for this um, session this evening. And you can also register for Jobs Online at jobsonline.co.uk or for any other support from ST, please email concierge.service at ST.com. And these links will be available on the screen and in the comments as well. So your certificate link is on the screen and in the comments. This recording and the slides will be available on our website very shortly. I want to say thank you to Alison for my um, being co-presenting with me this evening. You, you've been brilliant and fabulous. Thank you for sharing your knowledge uh, with us all. And a big thank you to ST, the JCN and Wound Care people for giving us this platform this evening. Um, and for all ongoing education, please follow our Facebook for all future if in announcements and events have a good evening everybody um and uh, please take care bye thank you